Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance and this is going to be a new video series called The Practical Applications of Science where I go through a research study and take out the practical applications of that. So in this video we're going to be covering the study called The Effects of Unilateral, Bilateral and Combined Plyometric Training on Explosive and Endurance Performance of Young Soccer Players from the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research in 2015. So basically what they did in this study is they got 54 soccer players, so they were young soccer players, 10 to 15 years old, and they put them through six weeks of training, two times per week. And these training sessions were essentially soccer training sessions. They weren't specific strength and conditioning sessions. So they split them up into four groups and all the players did the soccer training. So this group here only did the soccer training. This group here did soccer training plus some plyometric training. So as part of their 90 minute soccer training session, part of that training session was replaced with bilateral plyometric training. So bilateral meaning two leg. This group here did unilateral plyometrics instead of some of their soccer training. So they did single leg plyometrics for a certain period of time instead of doing their regular soccer training. And this last group here did their soccer training, but they did both bilateral and unilateral plyometric training for a small portion of their soccer training as well. And the thing to note here is that all of these plyometric training groups were volume matched. So this group that did the bilateral plyometrics did the same amount of jumps as the unilateral plyometrics, who did the same amount of jumps as this group who did both the bilateral and unilateral plyometric training. So it was volume matched. So what happened? Basically they tested performance after that six weeks of training. They tested their 15 and 30 meter sprint time. They did an agility test and then they did the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, which is an endurance test. So in gray here, we have the group that did soccer training only. In blue, we have the group that did the soccer training plus the bilateral plyometric, so the double leg. In the orange, we have the group that did the soccer training plus the single leg plyometrics. And in the green, we have the group that did a combination of both the double leg and single leg plyometrics. So if we have a look first here at the, sp the linear speed, we can see here that first and foremost, the group that did the soccer training only didn't improve their sprint performance at all. Whereas the groups that did some sort of plyometric training improved quite a bit. Now if we have a look here at this blue graph, the group that did the bilateral plyometrics, they improved in both 15 and 30 meter sprint times. The group that did the single leg plyometrics improved more. And then the group that did both the single leg and double leg plyometrics improved a slight amount more than that. And we can see they improved here because a decrease in sprint time means an increase in performance. We see the same thing here with the agility test, which was not technically agility, it was actually a change of direction test. But the group that did the soccer training didn't improve. The group that did the bilateral plyometrics improved. The group that did the unilateral plyometrics improved even more. And then what was slightly different to the linear speed is that the group that did a combination of single and double leg plyometrics didn't improve any more than the group that did the unilateral plyometrics only. In terms of the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, we're looking here at the total distance traveled. And if you're not familiar with this test, essentially it is a test where they have to repeatedly run up and back intermittently so they get a rest period. So it's 20 meter sprint up, 20 meter sprint back, and then they get a small rest period. And they have to do that again at increasingly faster paces until they're exhausted. So this is a test of endurance. And we can see here a similar trend where the group that did soccer training only didn't improve. And we see an increasing improvement from double leg, single leg, and then combined. Now this is a test of endurance. So it was surprised that performance was improved by quite a substantial margin. I would assume that the reason for this is because the yo-yo intermittent recovery test is a lot faster than most endurance tests, which means that speed will play a different role. So because they increase their linear speed time, they probably increase their speed reserve and therefore could perform more high intensity bouts at a sub-maximal pace 
and continue to do that for a longer period of time because they increase their speed reserve. So what are the practical applications of this study? First and foremost, doing the sport practice alone may not be able to improve physical performance. So we probably need some sort of extra training if we want to improve our physical performance. The other thing was that the single leg plyometrics appeared in general to be more effective than the double leg plyometrics. So we probably want to preference those over the bilateral plyometrics. And then the other takeaway was that doing a combination of both single leg and double leg plyometrics were more beneficial than doing either method alone, at least for improving linear speed. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.